In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm going to teach you how to collect insects in a pine forest like this so next time you're out camping, you can bring home all sorts of insect gold. Before we get into this episode, I want to remind you to take this survey as soon as possible. It takes three minutes to take. You can scan the QR code or type in this link in your browser or go in the description of this video to find out more. We'll be giving away 20 t-shirts to randomly selected participants. So in this episode, I'm going to, within one day's time, see how many different types of insects I can collect using a wide variety of different techniques. I'll share some tips with you guys along the way as we go through that and all the awesome insects I was able to find out here in this beautiful wilderness. As I open up the window to the car, this insect flew into the car. Now it might be hard to see right now, but this is a deer fly. So the way you can tell it's a deer fly or a horse fly is just by the shape of its head. It's got those extremely large eyes. It takes up a large portion of its body. The eyes are the main part of the head and they have a very distinct head shape. You can kind of see its head there. It almost looks like there's hardly anything connecting it to its body. Like I was saying, those large eyes, look at how much of the head those eyes take up. This guy's actually got some broken wings. Oh, he's got such a creepy face. They're pretty scary insects. That guy, what an interesting specimen. It's interesting just to watch his abdomen and see how that thing is just pumping and pounding. Like he's moving quite quickly. He's really like pumping there. Oh man, that scared me. I get so easily spooked by these types of things. It's almost got kind of like a beard to him, kind of like a robber fly, which I do believe they're closely related. Look at the eyes and kind of look at those stripes on the eyes. It's very interesting. Okay, I'm putting him on the ground. I'm done with him now. So I'm gonna just uh, be careful where he's walking on the ground because I don't want him climbing up on my leg. So to kind of describe how horse flies feed, I like to kind of compare it to mosquitoes. So mosquitoes, they're like silent assassins. They come in very quietly, silently. They don't care about anything. They come in, they feed. They don't want you to even know that they're there. Um, they take your blood and then they fly off. Horse flies, will feed in a different way. They will actually come in with brute force, basically like someone coming in, kicking in your door at your house and robbing you at point blank with a gun. What they do is they land on your skin and then they will cut you open and cut open a huge gash so that tons of blood just starts flowing out. And I'm not saying like your whole body, I mean this is a small creature, but they will cut you open so a lot of blood comes out and then they will soak up as much of the blood as they can and then they fly off. And then they just leave you there with uh, a lot of pain and a cut. So. Horse flies are not fun. Um, they kind of have a different way about going, about getting blood to feed off of things, usually like horses and deer and other mammals. The next thing that I did, which is important to do, is to put out some pitfall traps, which is a great technique. And as I was out putting out the pitfall traps, I ran into a cool insect, which I've got here in the dirt, but I'm gonna show you guys right now. We'll see if it bites me or not. So while I was digging through the dirt, I found this beetle larvae. And here it is, pretty cool looking beetle. It's got some fine hairs on it. And this looks a lot like what we would call a wire worm. It would be in the Elaterid family, which is click beetles. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, it has uh, just like a caterpillar would. It's got kind of like a false, like a false leg on the back, just like one little leg. Which is really interesting. Look here. See that? The little cup thing. He's got a little suction cup on the back. On his back leg. It's actually pretty cool. There you go. You see it? A little suction cup there on the back leg. And that really does look like another head. I mean, seriously, that looks like it's its head. 
such an interesting uh, kind of defense mechanism. All right, now that I've warmed up a bit, I'm gonna try my hand at doing some sweeping here in this tall grass, these weeds, all sorts of things here. Let's see what we can find. All right, let's see if we found anything cool here. Try to slow anything down that tries to fly off. Fly, not that interesting. More flies. Hmm. Hey, look, a lot of insects will feed on plants and as they're feeding, it will stimulate these, the production of kind of these canker type things. And other times, insects will actually be living inside of those. They'll lay their eggs inside of the plant. The plant will make a gall for them and they'll live inside. Mostly just weeds here, lots of dandelions. Lots of uh, some little caterpillars. Look at all the little larvae and stuff. Just all this movement in here. Caterpillars, some aphids, lots of little gnats. There's probably an inchworm there. Let's try it again in a different area, see what we can find. Oh, there we go. There is another deer fly. There he is. Take a look at that guy. Just resting on the plants, I guess. There we go. And they make a very loud buzzing noise, for sure. It's scarier than bees to me. Some more flies. A couple little ants. More of these caterpillars. I've seen quite a few of those. These caterpillars here. Hello. Nice big one. Nice. We got a little cocoon here. Look at that. Cocoon. With a lot of cocoons, you know that they're just about ready to hatch because the eyes start to get really dark. See those eyes are getting dark, so I don't know how much longer this thing has. Maybe a damsel bug? Not sure, it's a predator I believe. Damsel bug maybe? There's that inchworm inching along. He's really trying to lift himself up. They're really strong. It's interesting how they can lift their whole body just off of those couple little pseudopods or false legs that are on the bottom. They're just like little suction cups. Pretty cool. Okay, well I'm gonna try that one more time. We'll see if we find anything else just as interesting. My adrenaline's kind of going right now because my wife just started screaming while I was sweeping and she was screaming because this thing landed on her. And this is a longhorn beetle. See if I can get it onto my hand. I don't think it's gonna bite me. If it does, then I guess I'll learn the hard way. Oh, he doesn't look very happy with me touching him. He's got nice sized jaws. It's pretty interesting. Come onto my hand. He's actually making a little noise, like a tiny little high-pitched squeak. My hand's still shaking because, you know, my wife was screaming. I thought my son was in danger, like falling in a river. Oh, where'd he go? He fell on the ground. So I'm having a hard time holding this thing just because I've got adrenaline pumping through my body. So we're camped out right by a river and I was worried about my son. There we go. He is on my finger. Whew. Okay, I got him.
it's starting to calm down. It's got very long antennae. Beautiful specimen. He's got striped antennae. He's got all these white splotches on his back. Interesting, very nice specimen. You guys can see his jaws. Interesting beetle. So these types of beetles, they can fly very well. One time we were camping and they were just flying all over us. We were at a campfire and seriously, about every couple minutes, they were just flying past us, flying onto us. There was just thousands of them out. So they can fly very well, um, but I don't think they're gonna purposely or intentionally try to hurt you at all. All right, so I'm done with sweeping. Now I'm gonna start ripping into a rotting log. It's just me and the GoPro now, so we'll see how well this footage turns out. Let's see what we can find. Okay, so this is a nice looking log. Definitely not nice for the tree, but you can see there's lots of sap all over it. I'm gonna start ripping into this, see if there's anything in here. Try to be somewhat gentle, I guess, right? Not finding much of anything in here, so I think we're gonna move on. Just isn't looking that great insect wise. This tree actually looks like it was pretty healthy. That somebody just chopped it down and it was just bleeding out all this sap. So that's not gonna work for what we wanna do. I think this log over here will have some better luck, huh? Hopefully. I'm already seeing some ants running around. Ants, huh? Hmm. Looks like these could have been carpenter ants that were in here. Goopy and larvae, this is kind of where they've been chilling out. Just inside of the wood here. They've kind of carved this out and made their own little home in here. They haven't really gotten super alerted to me either that or this is just a really small colony. Let's see, here's all the pupae. You can kind of see the ant bodies in there. Look, they're trying to get everything hidden into the dark, into a different kind of chamber type thing. And down here we got the cleanup crew, cleaning up some of that stuff too. Out here in Idaho, we don't find many termites. There's more carpenter ants and things like that. So I'm a little bit sad that I wasn't able to find very many things in the rotting logs. My GoPro battery basically went dead and I don't want to haul this camera all the way around because my batteries are running low. So I'm going to try scouting the outside of the trees and see if I can find any interesting insects, maybe some boring insects too. A lot of these trees are just smothered in sap, which makes me believe that, you know, something must have been, you know, pen penetrating this this tree and causing all this damage. There's just sap all over. When you look at this one over here, there's just thousands of these holes all over the place, which I'm assuming are probably from insect damage. But this thing is just screaming out with tears of sap, screaming out that it's been under attack. Let's see if there's any cool insects here. Now, if you look closely here, it's moving very quickly. This, I believe, is a stonefly. That is a stonefly adult. And a very unique, uh, oops, look, came on to me. And I believe they are predaceous when they come out of the water. Just a beautiful, interesting insect. And these guys are tied to the river, so that's why I'm finding it here. And it just flew off. And there is, on the edge of the tree, a large carpenter ant. Look at how big he is. It's a big ant. One of the bigger ant species of North America. And this is just a worker. 
out and about exploring to see if he's gonna check out my finger. He's like, okay, what is this? Uh, these carpenter ants can get quite large. The queens are very big. Nice carpenter ant. Hello there, friend. Wanna come on to me? Oh, I'm gonna slip here. I'm right by the river. Hopefully I don't fall in. Much larger ant species than the ones we were seeing earlier. Pretty cool. It's cool how I can just sit here and stare at this tree. There's just a whole habitat filled with different insects that are, you know, living off of this tree. Something has caused this sap to come out. The ants are all over it and there's other predators on it. I know, look up there. There's a little bird's nest. Cool. I wonder if these guys are feeding off of the sap or what? I keep seeing these stoneflies on here. Either that or they're just predators. I'm not 100% sure. But there's some connection with this tree unless it's just the fact that it's next to the river. Now if you wanted to collect insects off of the trees like this, I would say the best thing to do is to use forceps, soft touch forceps, grab them really quick, or just get a jar or a container, throw it over top of them, shake it really quick, or try and knock them into the jar as fast as you can. Beautiful insect. All right, well the time has come. It's time for me to go check out those pitfall traps. I'm really hoping that there's something in there. They've only been out for about 20 hours. Hopefully there's some insects in these traps. Let's go see what we can find. All right, here is trap number one. And I am just pulling the traps straight out because I'm not gonna reuse these uh, here. And it doesn't look like there's anything in there. Oh, hold on, what is that? Oh, nice, a centipede. I don't think it's alive, I think it's kind of desiccated. There is a small centipede. Cool, I was worried that nothing would even be in these because I mean, I've only left them out for less than a day, so. Okay, here is the second trap. Hmm, as far as I can tell, I don't think there's anything in here. Here is trap number three. A tip I wanted to share with you guys that I didn't in my last pitfall video is that the greatest ally you can have if you're putting out pitfall traps is number one, time. Uh, the more time you leave the trap and you keep checking, you'll find more insects. And the number two is the number of traps you have out. So I've put out about six traps to hopefully see if I can find something because I'm only gonna be here for a day. Here is trap number four. This area is a lot warmer, a um, lot more foliage, vegetation, and here we go. That's kind of odd actually a bumblebee in there which makes me wonder how on earth it got in there if it was just stumbling around walking or if it accidentally landed in there and then all these ants took it out I don't know that's very odd I never had that happen before it's clearly dead though as to how it got in there I'm not sure other than it just flew in and Yeah, but there's quite a few ants in there. Now let's go to number five, the last one for the day. And I started looking at it and it didn't look like there was anything all that interesting at first. But then we saw this one thing in the corner, which looks like it's some sort of cricket or something. Grasshopper, so let's go through this. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything in there other than those ants. But this is what I'm interested in. Whether this got in and got killed by the ants, I don't know. 
some sort of cricket. It almost looks like a cave cricket. It's really interesting. Its head was kind of chewed off. Looks like a cave cricket to me. And that are just a young juvenile cricket of some sort. It just looks very odd. Let's get a zoom in on that. Hmm, strange. Some sort of orthopteran, grasshopper, cricket of the sort. Very odd. If you think you know what it is, please let me know. I think it's a cave cricket, Refidophoridae, I think. But I can't really tell. It just it's kind of odd. I don't know if that just got in there by accident or how on earth that got in there. It's very strange. Strange but very cool. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it's just a normal juvenile cricket. But it's really cool looking anyways. Sometimes the coolest things are the half body of an insect that you find because you have no clue what it is. So you start imagining what kind of cool thing it could be. And it's probably just a normal old cricket baby. but. We can dream, can't we? Maybe there's a cave around here and it's a cave cricket, who knows. Okay guys, that's about it. If you have not yet taken the survey, please take it. It will help me out so I can keep investing lots of time and energy into this channel. And the University of Idaho, as you've seen with the GoPro and the other new equipment that I've been getting, is willing to support and invest into the insect hunter. But we need to know that it's helping make changes in people's lives because that is what the University of Idaho Extension is all about, is changing people's lives. So let me know, fill out that survey quickly. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part of this episode was. That way then I can know which types of techniques you like the most. Maybe you're all about the pitfall traps. Uh, maybe you're not. I just need to know that because I want to keep serving you guys and helping you guys get interested in collecting insects and get you guys excited so you can go out and have a blast looking for insect gold.